Right up. Starting at verse 25. Are you ready? Kind of short on time here. And it came to pass that in the morning, um, behold, it was Leah. So Jacob had no idea that it wasn't Rachel until morning. Reekage, huh? And he said to Laban, what is this thou hast done unto me? <laughs> I can imagine he's kind of upset. He's like, what have you done? He says, did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? The definition of beguiled is charm or enchant someone sometimes in a deceptive way. So he has deceived Jacob. And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Well, why didn't he say so? Why does he have to trick him into marrying Leah? I feel really sorry for Leah. How that's humiliating for her that her father has given her to Jacob under deceptive means and Jacob is not happy about it. He should have told Jacob, look, you know, you, you can't have Rachel first. <laughs> you have to take the, the elder one has to marry first. So he says, and Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. He was just worried he wasn't going to be able to marry Leah off. He thought he was going to be stuck with her uh, in his home forever. And so he got her married through deceptive means. In verse 27, fulfill her week. And we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. So now he's served for seven years thinking he's going to get Rachel as his wife, but he's been deceived and given Leah. And now not only is he stuck with Leah, but he's just now told that he has to work another seven years to get Rachel as his wife. And evidently Jacob really, really loved Rachel because it says in verse 28, and Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. He worked another seven years while being married to Leah in a way he, he wasn't happy about it. Um, he did so and fulfilled her week and he gave him Rachel, his daughter to wife also. So he worked 14 years to get Rachel in verse 29. And Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, Bela, his handmaid, 
to be her maid. In verse 30, and he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. I mean, poor Leah. I mean, once he's married to Rachel, too, he probably never goes into her tent anymore. You know, he just stays with Rachel. In verse 31, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. Now notice, Sarah, barren. Rebecca, barren. Now Rachel, barren. He's trying to show them. We had a question in the chat room just a while ago that I was answering. Um, uh, about why... Is the blessing Isaac can give only an expendable one, a blessing that can be blessed on the one son only? Why can't he just re-bless Esau? Because that's just not how it works. The, the Abrahamic blessing goes to the one that God chooses, and it's not split up among more than one. The whole inheritance goes to one, one son. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. So evidently, uh, Jacob still, you know, um, hung out with Leah at times. Uh, she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. She's thinking, okay, she knows he doesn't love her. Leah is thinking this. She does. She knows he doesn't love her. Um, but she says, now that I've borne him a son, uh, he will love me. In verse 33, and she conceived again and bare a son and said, because the Lord hath heard I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And verse 35, And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. So she wasn't having any more, uh, she was not getting pregnant anymore after that fourth son. And then we're going to move straight into Genesis chapter 30. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's stead who hath withheld thee, who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? He's like, Hey, it's not my fault. <laughs> Is everything okay? Is it's really looking um, in verse three, and she said, behold, my maid Bela, go in unto her and she shall bear upon my knees that I may also have children by her. And it, does that sound familiar? Sounds like Sarah and Hagar, doesn't it? These are children by, um, by the maids, by the flesh and the ones by the flesh do not inherit. In verse 4, and she gave him Bela, her handmaid, to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. And Bela conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. Now remember, Dan is the disinherited tribe. This is not a child born with the temple. 
inside him. This is a child born of flesh only. And Dan was actually disinherited. And Joseph's son Manasseh was replaced Dan as the 12th tribe. In verse 7, and Bela's, Bela, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, with great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. In verse 9, when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. It, it, can you see an obsession here um, about bearing these children? And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a son. It's like a, a it's like they're competing uh, to see how many children that they can bear to Jacob. In verse 11, and Leah said, a troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. So even Leah's maid bare a son, but Leah named him. In verse 12, and Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also, see, there's a bickering between them. And Rachel said, therefore, he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. So she's pimping out her husband, Jacob, <laughs> for mandrakes. In verse 16, and Jacob came out of the field in the evening and Leah went out to meet him. And said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. <laughs> in verse 17, And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived, and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire because I have given my maiden to my husband, and she called his name Issachar. In verse 19, and Leah conceived again and bare Jacob uh, the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. Well, evidently her worth, all of her worth, was in whether or not she was bearing sons. In verse 21, And afterwards she bare a daughter, and called her name Dina. In verse 22, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. In verse 23, and she conceived and bare a son. So notice, Sarah was barren till God opened her womb. Rebecca was barren for 20 years, and then God opened her womb. And then Rachel is barren, and then God opens her womb. In verse 23, and she conceived and bare a son and said, God hath taken away my reproach. Because back then, if you were unable to bear children to your husband, you were worthless. 
I mean, you were no different than a servant. Your worth was in how many children you could bear for your husband. Reek it, huh? In verse 24, and she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. In verse 25, and it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, send me away that I may go unto mine own place and to my country. In verse 26, give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee and let me go for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. In verse 27, and Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, appoint me thy wages and I will give it. So evidently he's not paying Jacob anything at this point. In verse 29, and he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou hadst before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming, and now when shall I provide for mine own house also? He's saying, I've been working for your house. When am I going to get to work for my own house? In verse 31, and he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire before thy face. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. Now notice Jacob is saying, Give me the ones that, you know, you consider less desirable. Because he's trying to be uh, cooperative with his father-in-law here. He doesn't want to say, Well, give me all the best and you keep the others. He's Instead, he's saying, you keep the best and I'll take the rest. In verse 35, and he removed that day the he goats that were ring striked and spotted and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted and every one that had some white in it and all the brown among the sheep and gave them into the hand of his sons. In verse 36, and he set three days journey betwixt himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. So he's got his own flock, but he's also feeding Laban's flock still and working for him. In verse 37, and Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and pulled and peeled white strikes in them and made the white appear which was in the rods and he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink that they should conceive when they came to drink in verse 39 and the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring striped, speckled, and spotted. Isn't that interesting how Jacob is able to assure that you have ring striped, speckled, and spotted uh, animals born? 
with this method he's using. In verse 40, and Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring straked and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flock by themselves and put them not unto Laban's cattle. He didn't want them mating with Laban's cattle. In verse 41, and it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. Now we're going to go, um, let's see, let's keep going. We still have about three minutes. Chapter 31 of Genesis. And he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father's, hath he gotten all this glory? So see, Laban didn't have anything until Jacob came. But the increase that Laban experienced through the blessing of Jacob, his sons are now going, wait a minute. He doesn't get to keep all this. This is our father's. See, they don't know that or understand or care, I guess, that all of this increase was because of Jacob. They are saying, well, wait, this is our father's and this is ours. <laughs> so in verse two of Genesis chapter 31, and Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban and behold, it was not toward him as before. So all of a sudden, Laban and his sons and the, you know, instead of being grateful for all of the increase, they're jealous because once the cattle were split off, Laban's quit increasing like they were and Jacob's just increased like crazy. So Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban and behold, it was not toward him as before. He's starting to be resentful because he sees that all the blessing is with Jacob's cattle. In verse 3, And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. In verse 4, And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before. But the God of my father hath been with me, and ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. See, when he says he, his wages were changed ten times, it was like Jacob want, had divided the flock among the best ones to Laban and then the speckled and spotted and ring striked he kept to himself. Well, those multiplied like crazy. So then Laban starts complaining and he wants the speckled, spotted and ring striked. And he wants Jacob to take the, the ones that are supposed to be better <laughs> because he's like, well, heck, you know, these that, uh, mine are not increasing like yours, so I want yours and you take mine. And so they'd switch and he, Laban kept, kept changing things 10 different times, but God did not suffer him to hurt Jacob. That's the end of our time together. God bless you. Thanks for studying with me. We'll be back tomorrow and Thursday at 6 p.m. here, same time, same channel. God bless you, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Straight up.